Joining the HD Connection today is someone who literally had me in awe the first time I saw her play. Now she became a superstar before even going off to college. While at the University of Louisville, let's just say she had no drop off as well. And she was selected second overall in the 2019 WNBA draft. I would like to welcome to the show, Asia Durr, home team, what's good? What's good, my guy, what's going on, what's going on? Nothing much. I'm glad you could join the show today. It means a lot to me. You know, you the home team. You the home team. So I had I to appreciate you. you. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. I, I, I truly thank you for this. Um, truly grateful for it. So thank you. Appreciate it. Now, Asia, it's crazy how we met. And I don't think nobody knows how we even met but me and you. But back in 2015, when you was attending high school at St. Pius X, your high school basketball team was playing against my girls' uh, high school basketball team, Jonesboro High School, in the state basketball tournament. And I was actually there to watch the girls and the boys play. Now, this, this is the crazy part. This is the crazy part, right? The game's going on. The game has started, right? So I'm, I'm keep saying to myself, man, who is this girl who been like this? You know what I mean? Then it gets to a point now. You, you, get, you, you continue to ball. You just... Everything you you shooting, you hit. You know what I mean? You can't miss, can't nobody guard you. So I, I nudged the guy beside me. I said, hey man, who, who is that girl right there? And he looked at me, he said, man, you don't know who that is? That's Asia, <laughs> number one player in the, in the country. She going to the University of Louisville. I said, she going to the University of Louisville? I said, okay, okay, okay. So long story short, you dropped 44 points against my high school team and y'all went on to advance. And remember it, I don't know if you remember this or not, but I came into the stands after the game and I met you and your, I think it was your mom and some more other people in your family. Um, and I even told you that if I ever had a daughter, I wanted my daughter to hoop like Asia Durr. <laughs> you know what I mean? So ever since then though, Asia, I followed you. Um, but growing up, I want to ask you, growing up, who taught you how to play the game of basketball so well? Well, first off, man, I, 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 that day seemed like it just took place. Like, I talk about that game all the time. Like, that was a great game. It was packed. It was sold out. Um, I talk about you to my dad and mom all the time. Um, and that was just – that was, like, one of the best games that I, like, had playing because it was so much fun. And uh, growing up, nobody really taught me how to play. It's funny how I started playing ball, like, my dad was actually training my brother outside because he was playing like rec recreational basketball. And uh, he, he had a game like that Saturday. So my dad was training him and I stepped outside to go, you know, watch. And then next thing you know, I picked up a ball and started doing all kinds of moves. And my dad was like, what? Like he didn't know what was like <laughs> going on because that was my first time ever like pick, picking up a ball doing anything so um he was shocked he was like who taught you those moves and I was just like doing all kind of moves and ever since then man I just kept on going now did you did you watch your brother beforehand or did you watch anybody else beforehand to be able to pick those moves up from he always said like that happened when I was three um I watched Allen Iverson but like that was one of my favorite players like during that time and then it was Brian and then Kobe you know so um my brother like we always talk talk trash all the time he think that he could play he can't play I mean there's so many times man I'm trying to tell you there's so many times where we in the backyard playing and we lower the goal down to like nine, nine feet and I'm dunking on him. I'm dunking <laughs> on him. I'm dunking on him every single time, man. But he swear he could play. He can't play, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's that's some good old family stories, man. I got some of those with my brother as well. Trust me. I'm now, telling you. If you had to pick one person um, within the game of basketball, who was someone that you would say you modeled your game after? Mm, it's crazy because I've I've been asked that question a whole lot, but. I really can't say a, spe a specific person. I would say I really like Kobe. Kobe, I like his mindset, mentality, um, and even not in the basketball world, right? I love Floyd. His mindset, like people call him cocky, 
I say he's confident. He know say, what he brings to the table. What is it? Say it again. He's confident. He's not it, cocky, man. You, you, I tell people this all the time, man. I said, if you have no type of confidence, you will not last playing ball. You will get eaten up, man. There's so many dogs out there who are very confident. They know what they bring to the table. So if you walking like a cat, it, like, trying to play ball, they going to eat your butt up, man. Like, that's why I, I, I love Floyd. I absolutely love Floyd. I watch him prepare for his boxing matches. Like, I watch him all the time because, like, his mindset, how he carries himself, he knows there's nobody better than him. And that's how you have to play because if you don't, you ain't going to last, man. That's right. Now, you were a McDonald's All-American um, you won three point contest at the McDonald's All American Game, Gatorade Player of the Year, two time Miss Georgia basketball, uh, won a medal as a member of the USA team. You accomplished a lot before even attending college. How did you keep yourself grounded and focused on the task at hand? It came natural, man. It was just, I had so much fun playing ball. Like all my friends, they would go to the football games Friday nights. I'll be in the gym training. Nobody forced me. Nobody told me to go out there and train. That was me. That was my choice. No one forced you, right? You made that decision. So, so let me tell you what I tell people, right? You sacrificed then for the greater good, right? Sometimes uh, people don't understand. And, and I went through this, Asia, me and my brother, because my brother played in the NBA for nine years, right? Oh, yeah. When we, when we were younger, we had to sacrifice a lot, right? We didn't get to do everything that the kids um, in high school and middle school wanted to do, it's, especially if we wanted to be great. So you just said no one forced you. Friday night football games, everybody else going to the games. Asia is in the gym working on her game. Not because somebody asked you to do it, but because that's what you wanted to do, because you wanted to be the best. Correct. And I knew it was so many great players. I don't pay attention to who's training, who's in the gym. I focus on me. And I know there was always something that I needed to train on. I would play a game and I would have 40 points, right? And I'll say, man, it's still something I could have done better. And that's just the type of mindset that I had. Because it's like, yeah, I'm dropping 40. But as soon as I get to college, man, like, it's going to be players out there who know how to play. And that's what I saw. I mean, I, I played against great teams, great coaches um, that had three players guarding me. Like the whole scout was to stop me. They built their five players on that court just to stop me. And it's like, I got to learn, okay, if they take this from me, what am I going to go to? So, and that's what I was training for. That That's what I was, you know, taking myself through because it's like, it's gonna be it's gonna be a time where you struggling. It's gonna be a time where you gotta go to plan B and plan C. That's right. You're correct. You're correct about that. Now you mentioned college. Let's talk about the University of Louisville. I'm a proud alum of U of L myself. That's another connection we have. And in Asia, you could have went to any college you wanted to coming out of high school. Um, and that's including UConn, who was knocking down your door, but you chose the University of Louisville. What stood out about Louisville more so than the other universities? Right, yeah. It was just so many great schools out there. I mean, I I had narrowed my top 13 schools down to the top five. Mm -hmm. And between those five schools, it was just – Louisville was a place where um, the fans stood out to me. It was like – you know it. It's like it's, <laughs> it's fans that – it's the best fans in the country. I always say that, mm -hmm. right? And it's, it's just – when I got there, I was like, uh, I think I was a senior in high school. I had went and took a tour and all that. And all the fans knew my whole family. They knew me. They was calling my name, going through the store, at the games. It was like 13,000 fans almost every single night. And then when it was, you know, one versus two, like top teams playing, it would be sold out. 18,000, man, 20,000 fans there. I'm like, dang, this is crazy. Like, this is where I want to go because it's like, I want to play in front of a packed house. And not just not just the fans, it was the coaching staff treated me like family. The whole team did, man. It just felt like home. Now, I want to bring up a name. You just mentioned the coaching staff, Jeff Waltz, Louisville women's basketball head coach. Um, what has he meant to the life of Asia Durr? Oh, he's tremendous, man. I I always tell people, if it ever came down to it, even still 
to this day. If I needed to call Coach Walsh at three o'clock in the morning, he'll be right there. You know, it, it's so many things he helped me out, not with just basketball, but just in life. Speaking like this, like I grew up, I had a stuttering problem, right? And so does he. He helped me out to be more brave, to talk to, to people. And I remember we had so many talks, just me and him. And he was just helping me, like, not care about what people think, because I always wanted to please people, not in the sense of being great, but just because, like, my family knows my brother stutters, my dad does, and that can kind of make you shy, right? And Coach Wallace taught me, he's like, don't care about that. People will accept you no matter what. And he's like, you see me? I stutter all the time. I can't talk. But he's like, just laugh. Like, don't care about that, man. And it's, it's stuff like that where Coach Walls really, you know, helped me. He helped me out in so many ways. And my, and my, 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 my whole family too, man. Like my brothers, my mom, just being there. You know, there was times where I was struggling, you know, because it's just so hard, you know, going to school, going to class and playing ball. And then on top of that training, right? So he was always there. And then those are the times where y'all, it's not like y'all were, y'all weren't good. Y'all was ranked in the top five in the nation. Y'all, y'all had a squad, but Asia, one of the reasons, well, a few of the reasons why I chose Louisville is because, so I went on my visit, right? And I committed right then and there on my visit because it felt like a home away from home. I knew um, while I was at the University of Louisville, that's the closest thing I can get to home. That's the closest thing I can get to feeling like my family is there. And all the guys, man, they didn't, they embraced me. I knew like two or three of the guys before I even got up there and they were from South Georgia. So that helped as well. But all the facilities were, were, were damn near brand new. Um, at the time, Tom George was the athletic director and I trusted him and, and he, and he followed through with his, with his promises and things of that nature. Um, the coaching staff, I committed to a John L. Smith, a head coach, but he left. But Tom Jarrett convinced me to stay, and I'm glad I did because I had probably one of the best times of my life at the University of Louisville, literally. <laughs> I'm telling you 100%, man. And it's crazy because I met Tom Jarrett. He was there my freshman year for sure. I think he left my – I think that was my sophomore year. Right. And he was great, too. Like he was he was a great guy. He was always, you know, there for all type of sports. Right. And like you just said, it just felt like home, man. It just felt right. Like and it's you're from Georgia, too. It was only a six hour drive, too. So it's like my family was always up and down the road, man, coming to see me. So it, it was perfect, man. Um, You talk to uh, the, the 80 now, Vince Tyra. That, that's my guy, man. He's, he's awesome. Too. He's a good dude, too. Yeah. Like I said, if, if Tom Jurich couldn't be there, um, he couldn't be replaced by a better man than Vince. And so Vince has done a great job with the university, with, with the athletic programs and, and things of that nature as well. Now, while, while you were at Louisville, you did your thing as well. Now, you were two-time ACC Player of the Year. Uh, you won the Don Staley Award, for which goes to the nation's best guard in women's D1 basketball. Um, as well as the Ann Meyer Drysdale Award, which goes to the best shooting guard in women's basketball. What do you remember the most about Louisville, not basketball related though? Not, oh, that's tough. Not basketball related. <laughs> Ooh, it was so much basketball, man. I'm trying to think. Um, <laughs> shoot, man. I'm trying to think. Nothing to do with basketball. Mm -mm. I knew mm. I was a curveball. <laughs> that that's a great question because I'm trying to think like it was so many great times that we had with basketball, but not even just with basketball. I mean, it it was still great. Like I say for me, because I mean, kids stay in school, right? Mm -hmm. But I was the type of person where school wasn't my best thing. Like I just always wanted to play ball. But going to class actually wasn't that bad. I know that sounds crazy, but I actually look forward to going to class. Like the pro profession, professors there were cool. Um, they were smooth sailing. Like they worked with you. They didn't just give it to you, right? Mm -hmm. I know that sounds crazy, but like 
especially like day after games, I look forward to like going to class That's because it was cool, man. The teachers there were cool. It's not like they were uptight or rude, man. They they made class fun. I remember my video. I took this uh, communications class, right? And it it taught you like public speaking, taught you how to film. And I look forward going to that class because that teacher was the best teacher I ever had. I forget his um, name, but it was just, he made class so much fun. Like we was talking, we was learning, but he was making that fun too. So I would say that. And, and speaking about going to class, so my major was political science, right? So I had a lot of fun with my professors. Um, still to this day, when I go back to Louisville, you want to know who I go see? Who you go see? see? Everybody in the political science department. That's dope. Dr. Wallace, Miss Brandon, Dewey Clayton. Um, it's so it's so many more. All of them. I go see them, man, and check on them and see how they're doing because they played a vital role in my life. I had a, I had a professor, Dr. Wallace, right? I never forget. Uh, we used to have a lot of essay tests and we had to present them in front of the class and what they meant. And I remember Dr. Wallace stopping me and, and, and telling me, asking me, why am I cheating the class of all of me? You know what I mean? Of 100% me. Um, she said, never you do this. Make sure you give people all of you at all times. And that was big for me. And that's why you see me now. Listen, when you, when you see Harry, I'm giving people all of me. There's no 50%. There's no 75. There's no, there's no 90. 100% is what you're going to get is what you're going to see. For sure. You and do. That's how it is. You do, now, man. What, what was your favorite subject in school? My favorite subject in school was math. I, I love math. I love math. I hate it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I had two tutors at Louisville in math. Now, I still aced it, but I had two tutors, and I had this girl helping me out. So she say she was trying to help me out. You know, <laughs> what her ulterior motives probably was, but that's a story for another day. Now I'm just joking. <laughs> hey, look, you know, I know how, how it go, man. I know how it go, for sure. <laughs> now, the college life is over. 2019 WNBA draft comes around and you're drafted to the New York Liberty with the second overall pick. Um, what, what what were some challenging things that you faced as a rookie? Oh, man, that was one of the most challenging times of my life. Besides my freshman year in college, 2015, 2019 was, was it was challenging. So was 2020. But 2019, it was it was very strange because I went I got drafted. I got drafted, started playing. Then I got hurt. I played a total of 18 games my first year. Not only was I dealing with being hurt, I was still trying to learn the system, learn the players, stuff like that. So I had so much going on all at once to the point where, man, it was just, it was it was so challenging, man. Cause all I wanted to do was just hoop and I couldn't do that. I couldn't play 100% because I was hurt. Yeah. So no matter how hard I tried to, to, to play, it just, it was just my hips, man. Um, they were just breaking down on me already. <laughs> <laughs> now, y'all facility was up there in White Plains, right? Well, so we, we practiced in Brooklyn, oh, and okay. then we play out in White Plains, yeah. So my, when my brother played with the Knicks, he used to live out there in White Plains um, at one city place up there in Westchester. So when I used to go visit, you know, I used to catch that Metro North to the city. I used to be like, listen, bro, I'm not staying up here in White Plains, man. I got to get to the city. So he asked me, what time you coming back? I said, I don't know. I'll let you know. If I come back tonight, I'll let you know. <laughs> right. Man, it get about 3, 4 in the morning. My brother asked me, he was like, man, where you at? I said, I'm not coming back. I'll be back in the morning, baby. I'll be back in the morning. <laughs> Look, man, that commute is crazy. Like, we were staying in Brooklyn, right? And, like, we'll practice in Brooklyn, and then we'll go to a White Plains to play. And not only – but it was only 30 miles, probably 40 miles from us. But the traffic was crazy, right? So it took us two hours just to get there. So that's why I'm 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 very fortunate we not play at the uh, Barclays now. So um, that's good, you know what I mean. But 
it was a great experience, ups and downs. You know, I learned a lot. My my teammates were there for me through it all. And, um, it was a great experience. You know, the challenges made me grow. That's what's up. Now, your birthday's on April 5th, right? Yeah. I knew it was something about you, Asia. I, listen, I knew it was something about you. So my father, his birthday is on April 5th. Word, for real. Now I know you got you got some to you now. You got <laughs> Listen, you might not be a person to mess with. <laughs> Look, man, Aries, I'm telling you. <laughs> you might not be a person to mess with for real because my daddy don't play. He doesn't play at all. But he'll, he'll, he'll give you the world. He'll give you the shirt off his back. He'll do any and everything for you if he could. But if you cross him, though, that's it. It's over. That's it. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm, I'm the same way, man. It's, Look, I'm real cool. I'm chill, laid back. As soon as you cross me, man, it's that, that's it. It's it's like people see us as like what's what's the word aggressive mm -hmm. or angry, but it's like nah, man, we're actually really cool people. But it's like when we get stepped on, we don't like that. Don't <laughs> nobody like that, man. <laughs> you feel me? Like nah. <laughs> now, are you a big movie person? You like to watch movies? A little bit. It's changed, you know, ever since I was back in high school. Then I got to college. I watched no TV because I, I was always traveling, playing ball. Then I got drafted. I don't watch TV now. I don't. If you had to pick a movie, what, what, what what's your favorite movie if you had to pick one? Boys in the Hood. Okay. Okay. You took it to the hood. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah, I, love, I love that coming from you, though, because... Most people your age don't even know where Boys in the Hood is. That's true. That's I'm, true, man. That's such an iconic movie for the culture. That's such an iconic movie for the culture. So I'm I'm glad you said Boys in the Hood. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, look, I I remember, I think I started watching that. I was probably in high school when I first saw that. I've watched it at least five times now. Man, that's one of my favorite ones. That Coach Carter and Gridiron Game. I don't know if you've seen that one. Mm -hmm. You should, yeah. Gridiron Game. That's those are my, like my top three. <laughs> now we're gonna we're gonna take it to more of a personal level now, Asia. Early June 2020, you had contracted COVID, um, and it sidelined you from playing basketball and, and really a lot of everyday normal life things as well. I know it's been a long road coming back from the virus, but by the grace of God. You're in the healing process of it all. Talk to me about that process and what it's like. Yeah, man, it's uh, that that's one of the worst things in my life I've ever gone through. Like, I thought surgery was bad back in 2015. I thought surgery was bad back in 2020 or 2019. Um, but this different, man. It was just not only just having COVID, right? But after, um, I don't have COVID now, yeah. but I still deal with symptoms, right? And that's part of like trying to bounce back from it. Hold on one second, my dog. My bad. No, you good. Come on. But yeah, so like just having COVID was, that was a challenge for me. And like, I thought I was sick in June, but it seemed like it just kept getting worse from July to August. And then after that, it was kind of like it started to calm down. Then I got better, then I got worse again, end of September. So I had went to the hospital and got tested for it. I'm like, do I have COVID still? Didn't still have it. But I was like vomiting and all that type of stuff, man. And um, for like two weeks, and, you know, ever since end of September, it's just been like back and forth with feeling better and then feeling worse, feeling better, feeling worse. And um, I'm thankful for my team because they put me in a position to where um, I've been talking to some great COVID doctors who specialize in cases like mine, um, nutritionists. Um, it's certain stuff now that I can't eat, which will cause me not to feel well, which is crazy, man. That's crazy. Um, so it's, it's definitely been a challenge, but I just try to take it day by day. 
And I, I want to tell you, listen, you take things one day at a time and move at your pace because we all heal differently, right? Um, stay in your word because if God is on your side, no one or nothing can be against you, Asia. Understand, <laughs> well, basketball doesn't define who you are. Now, it's something you did very well and do very well, but there's more to Asia than dribbling a basketball. You know what I mean? And yeah. still, young, how old are you? 23. So you're 23. Listen, you're going to dominate this thing we call life. Trust me. You know what I mean? You're going to dominate this thing we call life. But make sure you speak it into existence. You visualize what you want. You know what I mean? Define your purpose. Attack it like a bat out of hell, Asia. You know what I mean? Because uh, we love. I love the game of football, but I understood at an early age that there, there's more to life than sports. You know what I mean? Right. You're, yeah. you're not at that point yet. Like you still, you're still, you're still, you're going to get through this and you're still going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to do your thing. You know what I mean? But uh, I will tell you, let it be a, a eye opening experience for you to, to get the train rolling, get the ball rolling for life at the ball. You know what I mean? So, Cause now you, you have more to think about. Okay. Um, if, if I don't play again, what do I want to do? You know what I mean? What, who can I touch? You know what I mean? What can I do with my life? What can I, what else can I flourish in? Because it's times and I, I meet a lot of young people there, there at the peak of their game. And I, and I talk to them about this and I said, Hey, plan A is good, but you need B, C, and maybe D as well. You know what I mean? Just in case. 100%. Yeah. My, my family. And that's great that you said that because my family has always talked on that. My mom is always like, you need to have a backup plan. I'm like, what backup plan? I'm about to just play ball, man. I ain't trying to hear that, but that's great. Cause you never know what could take place. Like you see so many great players who go down within their first few years and you just, they didn't know that was going to happen. So then it's like, now they are doing something different that they never thought that they would be doing. Right. So um, that's great that you said that. I've definitely been thinking about that, but also I, I, I'm very confident that this will pass, but it's just we, we don't know when. We don't know when I'll be back. I'm striving to be back this year. Um, but with this post-COVID thing, man, it's just like it's so much that is unknown to doctors, to people, to, you know, patients that have had it. You know, it's, it's like I thought I was good. I thought I was going to be good within the first two weeks. Right. They say 14 days, quarantine, boom, good. That wasn't my case. I was in my bed sick for three good months, man. Couldn't do nothing like sick as a dog. And now that I'm, you know, getting better, it's just so much back and forth. Like just last week, I was feeling sick as heck. Like I was sick. I was feeling super sick. Right. I couldn't do nothing at like two o'clock in the morning. Couldn't do nothing. And now it's like today I'm not doing too bad. So it's like, you see what I'm saying? It's just so much back and forth with this thing, man. It's crazy. Yeah, you you from the crib. Listen, I'm not worried about you. You built different. So I know yeah. whatever it is, Asian dude, whether it's ball, whether it's anything, listen, you go, you gonna do your thing, you're gonna thrive and you gonna you gonna you're gonna be successful. Listen, right. I believe in you, trust me. <laughs> now I appreciate that. What are some things that you have going on in the business world or some things that you, you possibly want to do in the future when it comes to business? Yeah, I will. I definitely, um, whether it's while I'm playing ball or whenever I'm done, I want to train kids. I want to start a foundation. Um, I want to be a coach. I want to give back to kids, to the youth. I just want to train. I want to stay involved. Um, my brother, he actually suffered a, a brain tumor back in high school. So I want to start a foundation um, to give back to kids who suffered from brain tumors like him. Um, because when that first went down back in like 2013, we didn't know what was what because doctors were saying they never saw something like that. Right. And I know there's many more kids out there that are going through the same thing that he went through. So I just want to give back, man. Like everything that has come to me, I want to give back times 10 and just start a trend. That's good. I like that. And you have the perfect platform to do it. And I love when people say they like to give back because out of anything I've accomplished in my life, um, besides being a father, you know what I mean? And a husband, giving back to the community is big for me. And my parents instilled it in me and my brothers and my sister growing up and 
I would do anything for kids, anything for kids to get a jump start uh, on this on this thing, life, because they they need it, man. And they have visuals now, right? Growing up, we didn't have many vis. I didn't have many visuals or people coming back to say, "Hey, X Y Z, do this, 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 this." I just had my pops and my mom. Right. Exactly. Now, nowadays, it, you guys are coming back. They're doing camps. Um, I think it's important for people who play a sport at a high level to go back and coach and for universities and for pro teams to hire people in these positions because you can relate to the kids. You can relate to the players because you've been there and done it. And so many times I see coaches that they can't even relate to, to, to players or kids because they didn't go through it. Yeah. 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 That's key, man. That's, I'm glad that you said that because when I was in high school trying to choose whatever school, right. It was some coaches that I was coming across that never experienced playing ball. And that's the most important thing with a coach. A coach needs to know how it feels to once be a player and to be a coach. And there's a lot of coaches out here. Not that it's not, not that it's a bad thing that you haven't played ball, but it's like if you're going to be a coach, you got to know what it feels like to be a D1 player or, or D2 or D3 player because that's that's so key because you got to know when to push your players and how to push them. And that was some things that I've seen throughout some college players that I know that struggle with because it was like the player and the coach are just bumping heads all the time. And it was because not because of chemistry or the bond that they did or did not have. It was simply because the coach didn't have that much of a background to know how to do those things. And that's so important, man. You're right. You're 100% right. Now, <laughs> let's talk about the music world a little bit. Now, who, who is your go-to artist? If Asia got you throwing in them AirPods and you mash and play, who is your go-to? Who you going to? 100%, man. I say Lil Baby. Okay. Gonna money okay. bag. Those those my go to. <laughs> That's what's up. Okay. Now last last one I have for you, Asia. Um, what are some things that you like to do? You know, just on your own. You got some free time and you want to do your own thing. What's the things you like to do? Uh, for the most part, I'm I'm real chill. Okay. Um, I like to spend time with family. Um, I like to go shopping here and there. Uh, watch TV. Um, I don't watch TV that much, but when I get time to, I'll turn on like cartoons and SpongeBob <laughs> or just watch <laughs> YouTube. That's that's all I pretty much do right now. Or I'll like uh, check out a few books. I've, I've started to read now, you know, ever since I had COVID, since I've just been on my downtime, I, I, I try to sharpen my mindset and read books that's key um i'll tell you this you never really have lived life until you've read books and traveled the world because you there's so many different perspectives when you do those two two things right there so stay down that path now i got you yeah that that's key I, it's crazy because so many people always talk i mean it was like you need to try to read, especially like back in college. I'm like, man, I hate reading. I hate it. But the problem is if you find some good books that you that you could learn from, and that's what I've done. I've found I've found some good books that I could, you know, learn from and use. So that was my problem. I was reading the wrong stuff, man. I was reading them dang history books. I don't want to read no freaking history, man. Like I need something that I could learn. I need something that I could take something from. So that was my problem. <laughs> That's what's up. Asia, I want to thank you for joining the HD Connection. You know this meant a lot to me. You're from the crib, Georgia. We both went to Louisville. We're going to always have that connection, and I really appreciate you coming on. Anytime, man. It's all love. I, I truly appreciate you, especially. I do want to say this before we go. You've showed love since, since day one, um, and that's huge to me. You know what I mean? Especially, you know, the type of person that you are, the type of player that that – you are slash were, you know what I mean? But that's huge, man. And it's, I truly appreciate genuine people like you. You know, it's not, it's not too many people that I could say 
are genuine because you know it. Everybody wants something from you. Everybody got their hand out. They just want what they could get from you that that they could benefit, you know, from. So I truly appreciate you just showing genuine love since day one, going back to high school, man, and just being true, man. So I true I truly appreciate that. No problem at all. You already know. <laughs> yes, sir.